Welcome to this developer how-to guide. My name is Jay Clifford and I'm a developer advocate here at Influx Data. In this session, we'll cover how to query Influx DB IOX with Grafana using the new Flight SQL data source plugin. We're going to be using Grafana to visualize data from free emergency generators to make sure that they don't run out of fuel. Each generator produces the following sensor readings, temperature, voltage, amount of fuel, and load. Each generator also has its own metadata, such as unique ID and geo coordinates, which will become important later in the tutorial. Telegraph will be handling our collection, passing, and writing to InfluxDB, so we will focus on configuring our Flight SQL plugin for Grafana and build out some visualizations to monitor our emergency generators. So before we jump into the demo, let's cover what exactly is Grafana and the Flight SQL plugin. Grafana is an open source analytics and monitoring platform that enables users to visualize and analyze data in real time. It is commonly used to monitor and visualize time series data, such as metrics, events, logs from applications, servers, networks, and IoT devices. You can easily create no-code dashboards, charts, and alerts, and share them across teams. It also provides a wide range of plugins, templates, and integrations. Grafana is a great choice as a front end for our emergency generator demo. This enables us to display both the historic and near real time data within the basic line graph, as well as using the GeoMap visualization to place our engines and temporal data on the world map. So, as we know, our engine data is currently being stored within InfluxDB. We're going to connect InfluxDB to Grafana using the Flight SQL data source plugin. You might be asking, well, what is Flight SQL? So to understand exactly what Flight SQL is, we first must understand the parent technology, Apache Arrow Flight. So Apache Arrow Flight is a high performance data transport framework designed to enable high volume transfers of columnar data across a network. Built on top of the Apache Arrow memory data format, Flight streamlines data exchange by reducing serialization and deserialization overheads, making it ideal for big data, machine learning and analytics workloads. Flight SQL is a module within the Arrow Flight ecosystem that provides a SQL interface for querying data over flight. We will be using Flight SQL to return large volumes of raw sensor data from our engines in real time for analysis. Now that we have the theory out the way, let's jump into the demo and set up Grafana. So we're going to start off in Grafana and we're going to configure our Flight SQL data source plugin. To do this, you're going to access the cogwheel on the taskbar. You're going to click on data sources. We're then going to add a data source. So click add data source and then you can search for the Flight SQL data source plugin. We're going to click on the Flight SQL data source plugin. And then we're going to fill out the following parameters in order to connect to InfluxDB IOX. Now, all of these parameters might seem daunting, but I'm going to show you some tricks on how to fill this out quite quickly. So let's start off with the host and port. To do this, we're going to navigate to InfluxDB. What you'll see at the top of InfluxDB is our URL. We're going to first take the host part of our URL. We're going to copy this here. Notice I've decided to omit the protocol. This is just how we've designed the plugin for Flight SQL to only use the host name. So I'm going to paste that into here. And then we're going to define the secure port 443. We're then going to define an authentication type. Now InfluxDB IOX uses tokens, so we're going to select that from the dropdown. We're then going to navigate back to InfluxDB IOX or InfluxDB Cloud, and we're then going to generate a token. 
So I'm going to jump into API tokens. I'm going to create a new token. I'm going to, in this case, create an all access token to keep the demo quick, but you can create a read only custom API token if you wish. So once I've done this, I'm going to name it Grafana so I know which token this is. I'm going to save and then I'm going to copy this token. Now it's very important that you copy this token as once you go off this screen, that token is lost due to security measures. So you would have to create a new token. So, so then we jump back into our flight SQL data source config. We paste that in here and then we also enable SSL and T. LS as well. Once we've done this, that's the basic connectivity done for our Flight SQL plugin. It's time to add some metadata. Now we use the metadata to define exactly where we want to query within InfluxDB. In this case, we use the notion of buckets. Buckets are essentially databases within InfluxDB where we keep our time series data. So I'm going to use this key here, bucket name, and then I'm going to define the name of my bucket. Now, in this case, if I navigate back to our buckets within InfluxDB Cloud, you can see I pre-created a bucket called generators. I'm going to use this name as this is where we'll be querying our engine data from. So I've clicked here and now we can click the button save and test to make sure our connection is working. As you can see, we've got the OK notification to know that our data source has been configured correctly and we can now start querying using the Flight SQL data source plugin. So what I'm going to do now is create an initial dashboard. So to do this, I'm going to jump into our dashboards panel here. I'm then going to create a new dashboard. The first one we're going to do is a basic visualization. So if I create and add a new panel here, you can see we're greeted with our Flight SQL data source plugin. Grafana enables you to create or generate SQL, but in this case, what we're going to do is create the SQL ourselves. So we're going to click Edit SQL. And this will see, switch us over to our SQL viewer. Now I've pre-created this query ahead of time, but I'll take you through exactly what I've done. So in this case, we're selecting the time, fuel and generator ID column from the table gen data. Notice that we're also using this Grafana global variable as well called underscore underscore time range time. What this does is it allows us to create a dynamic query within Grafana. So what this will do is allow us to use the drop down panel to select whether we want the last 15 minutes or the last two days worth of data. What we're going to do is we're going to call this fuel levels. And then we can click the cog here to check if we're getting any data. As you can see here, we're currently getting all of the fuel data as one series. In order to change this, what we're going to do is we're going to apply a transform in Grafana. To do this, you're going to click here on transform, and then you're going to find the following parameter from the dropdown. We're looking for partition. If you can't find it in the drop down, just simply part, um, search partition by here, and we're going to partition by value. We're then going to select the field generate, generator ID. This is why it's really important to have tags within our data so we can separate out our series. As you can see now, we've separated out our data. And if I drop this to 30 minutes, you can see we have each generator's fuel levels. This is really important as it allows us to historically view the uh, patterns within our generator fuel levels and see and predict when we might run out of fuel. So now that I've done this, this is quite a basic visualization. I'm just going to save and apply. And we have our fuel levels within our dashboard here. Now let's move on to a more advanced visualization. Now, 
Picture this, we have a series of engineers that want to go and fill the generators when they're running out of fuel. But the problem with the line graph is it doesn't actually tell you where the generators are. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the geo map visualization in order to plot our generators on a map, as well as telling you their current fuel levels and if they're going to be running out of fuel. So let's do that now. So we're going to click add panel. We're going to add a new panel. We're then going to navigate down and we're going to go edit SQL once again. We're then going to copy a pre-made query. I'll take you through it again, so don't worry. So I'll copy this one. In this case, we're using a selector, which is a unique function designed for InfluxDB uh, and is based in DataFusion. What this allows us to do is select the last known value for that column. So we're going to be selecting the last known value for time, fuel, generator ID, lat and long from the table gen data using that global variable to select within a certain time range. Now notice we also group by a numerical value free. So we're actually grouping by generate generator ID. What this allows us to do is select the last value from each generator. So we now have our query. If I run this query, and then if I select the generator view, we have our last three values as well as our lat and long coordinates. What I'm now going to do is I'm going to click the drop down. I'm going to scroll until I find the geo map panel, like so. I'm going to navigate back. So now that we've created our query, as you see here, let's fill it, finish filling out the configuration for our map. So we're going to give it a title once again. I'm going to call this fuel levels but I'm just going to put in brackets map. We're then going to scroll down. The top tip here is since we know our fuel engines are always going to be in North America, we can click the map view and we can click North America here to make sure that we're always centered on North America. The next thing that we're going to do is scroll down and we're going to define our latitude and longitude fields. In this case, we're going to select coordinates from location mode. Then we're going to select lat and long as our columns to take our coordinates from. Now, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to change the color parameter. The color parameter allows us, instead of taking a fixed color, allows us to take the fuel value as the way we define our threshold colors. So I'm going to click fuel like so. And then I'm going to scroll right down to the bottom and I'm going to define our color scheme. So make sure that the color scheme is clicked on by threshold, by value, and then we're going to define our thresholds. Now I know within the generated data that the top level of fuel is 500 and obviously the bottom level of fuel is zero. So in this case, we've created thresholds for 300, 250 and 100. And now that you can see on the map, I have amber green depicting depending on the fuel levels and their values. And this will change over time. Now, this is great for the engineers as they can now see which fuel engines are becoming critical and where they are on the map. So then I'm going to click apply change. So we can adjust these around like so make this a little bit more pretty for our end user. And as you can see, we have the basics up for working within uh, Grafana for our Flight SQL plugin. So how can you get started with this demo? Well, let's jump back into the slides and you can see exactly how you can try this yourself and get started with exactly the same example. So to get started yourself, simply head to our community repository where you'll find a repo called InfluxDB IOX Quick Starts. This has a whole host of examples using Telegraph, Grafana and InfluxDB IOX to get you started on your journey using time series data. I really hope you enjoyed this workshop today. We look forward to seeing what you build next.